hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock. Welcome to my YouTube channel. It is almost fall, and since I did some pumpkins in my previous video, both an intermediate slash advanced painting, as well as announcing a brand new beginner class where you'll learn how to paint these four little pumpkins, but I want to make my alcohol marker friends happy too. So I have a pumpkin house to share with all of you today. And I'm gonna give more of an overview of how you can approach a pumpkin house like this to create your own drawing. Or if you would like to get a sketch of mine that you can simply color in and follow a real-time video with more instructions, then head over to my Patreon page. All right, let's get started. So my pumpkin house began with a quick pencil sketch. If you're gonna draw your own pumpkin house, then you could start with pencil and just make sure you erase any excess pencil that's on the paper. Because if you're using any light colors, then the graphite will drag through the pencil. I mean, it'll just pick that up and move it, which means your yellow windows might go gray. But if you're using all dark colors, you don't have to erase any pencil lines. In general, that's not going to disturb your alcohol marker particularly much. But if you're worried about graphite, you could always just use a light alcohol marker to do the drawing itself. So I began by um, just figuring out where I wanted windows inside my pumpkin. And you also need to figure out if there's any extra windows. I was gonna have all rounded windows with round tops on them. And I was going to put shutters on mine, but you can do yours any way you like. I also put one peekaboo window up at the top, like a little house shape. And I just put the moss on the top. So then you don't have to figure out the perspective for what that little house would be. And I was feeling lazy. So I thought I'll just hide it behind the rest of that, which was kind of a nice cheater way out of it. And then it came to doing the coloring part. Now, when you're talking about a pumpkin, remember there are gajillion types of pumpkins. In my previous video, I did a pumpkin that was the Lady Godiva pumpkin, which had different kinds of stripes on it. So you can do a striped pumpkin, you can do a white pumpkin, you can do, there's actually all kinds of colors of them. If you just Google the, the types of pumpkins that are out there and you will find an amazing number to choose from. And if you're doing something whimsical anyway, that might be a really fun approach to just try a completely different style of pumpkin. You could also, if you didn't want to draw it the way that I'm doing, you want to make it even more whimsical, just grab a pencil and a fountain pen. Or if you're going to use alcohol markers, then grab a marker like a Sharpie that you can color in the image with alcohol markers. Or if you're watching this and you're going to do it in watercolor, then you could do it any way you want. Fountain pen would work great for that. And then just do some splashy watercolor. But I'm using alcohol markers because I wanted to do a scene. And in the scene, this is a scene that's taken somewhat uh, a little creative license from the enchanted classes that I host over on my website. And I have one that's like a year round kind of enchanted scenes. There's lots of rainbows types of scenes in it, not rainbows, but like happy colors, lots of flowers, that sort of thing. And then there's a winter one as well with a bunch of different winter settings. They're all slimline version things. So a lot of people who make cards would use those for that. But if you just want some ideas and ways to draw those different kinds of scene elements. You can check out those classes. I did put them in my brand new plugin that I mentioned in my recent video uh, that was all about the dogs, the uh, watercolor dog classes, because now that I have a fancy swanky plugin, I can tell you that if you order both of the enchanted classes, the regular one and the winter one, then you get an extra 5% off, lucky you. So if you're interested in taking those and you want to take two at once, then you get an extra discount. So they're also on a sale as well. So you get the sale and the discount on top of it. 
So that's pretty special. For your scene, you need to decide whether or not it's going to be daytime or nighttime. If you're going to do a scene at all, you could just do it with a white background and that would be perfectly fine. For mine, I decided it would be nighttime and I started making my scene dark as you can see, but it wasn't dark enough. So I had to keep going in and adding more darks. And in the enchanted classes, we talk a lot about how to do that using a lot of um, different kinds of colors together, using complementary colors to create darks that don't exist in alcohol markers. These are sketch markers that I'm using and they don't have the kind of dark colors that I want either. Copic doesn't have them. Nobody has anything like what I want because I don't like using full on black. This is full on black that I'm using back here because I, I did decide it was worth it for that. But if I were to just make a whole background, I generally don't like the look of just solid black marker. There's just something that doesn't look realistic. And I know this is not a realistic drawing, but you know, I kind of like to at least have that illusion in my head. So yeah, I like to mix colors. So the trees ended up being a green and being covered with a brown that was the perfect color to turn them into something nice and neutral so that now the house is really glowing. So depending on whether you want your house to be a nighttime one that's going to have a glow from moonlight on it or whether you're going to make it daytime, it's going to totally change the light on the pumpkin, whether or not you need more color added to it and whether or not the grasses are going to go dark. My grasses have to go really dark if I'm going to make it a nighttime scene. Now, another thing you can consider if you are inventing your own pumpkin house, then you might want to look at the shapes of pumpkins too, because there are different colors, but there are some pumpkins like the Cinderella pumpkin is more like a, it has more of a concave top to it rather than a rounded top like this one does. And that allows you to do other things with your design of your house because you can have more of peaks on the part that goes up. And then maybe you can have a swimming pool in the, the, the part that's concave. That would be kind of fun. Give your residents of your pumpkin house something fun to do in, in that kind of a shape. And you could also have like a whole neighborhood full of pumpkin houses, just all different kinds of pumpkins, different shapes, and they could all be little neighbors and you can create a neighborhood, which would be a lot of fun as well. And if you're a kid and you're doing this, then use your imagination because you don't even need me to suggest you any ideas. I'm always so jealous that kids just dive in and they don't feel like they have to do it right. They're just doing it. And that makes it right automatically. Like there is no need to try to figure out what the right way to draw anything is. And I don't have that anymore. You know, once you get to be a grown up, you kind of get stuck with, boy, oh boy, everything needs to look correct. And what if I didn't do it right? And we all panic. Kids don't have that. They don't have that at all. Now you can look at other architectural features to include in your house as well. As I said, mine all have rounded tops, but you can have rectangular tops. You can do double doors. You can do a little, like, a, how about a little porch? You can make a little porch coming off of your pumpkin. You could put a fence around it. So there's a little delineation of the property. There's a ton of things that you could do with something like this. And I encourage you to think through what you'd like to do. And if you want to use my sketch, then head over to Patreon and check it out over there. You can become a patron for just a dollar a month if you want to support my work. You don't have to give a lot, but if you have a lot to give and you're really grateful and you use my tutorials all the time, I would be most grateful for your support. All right. Thank you very much. You guys have a really great week ahead. I will see you again in a couple days with another video. Bye-bye now.